Greetings. My name is Andrei Gutkov. I am uh, working in uh, Roswell Park Cancer Institute, designated cancer center located in Buffalo, New York. I am senior vice president for basic science and uh, chair of Department of Cell Stress Biology. My research is focused on uh, understanding of the mechanisms of deregulation of a variety of stress response pathways in cancer cells as well as in uh, normal cells in relation to cancer origin, progression, or engraftment, and trying to use the information which we're generating during this research to come up with a new types of treatment of cancer or cancer prevention. Recently, our interests have uh, significantly switched towards studying of the mechanisms of aging in its relations to uh, cancer, uh, since as we all know, both conditions are uh, closely connected. During last um, probably 20 years, one of the central theories of aging in mammals has been evolving towards connection between chronic sterile inflammation, which is accumulating in tissues with age of a mammal, including humans, with systemic decline in regeneration capabilities, in function of uh, organs and tissues, and increasing risk of uh, major diseases, uh, altogether known as cancer related, excuse me, aging related diseases. And uh, the source of this inflammation, uh, its origin, uh, has been the central focus of studies of many. During the last couple of years, the dominating opinion in the field is about the central role of senescent cells, cells which chose to stay irreversibly growth arrested in response to DNA damage which they acquire uh, during their life and through that change their phenotype in more uh, significant way than just growth arrest, acquiring the ability to secrete a spectrum of uh, pro-inflammatory factors. These senescent cells, which initially were defined as such in uh, tissue culture experiments, eventually were proclaimed to be the main suspects uh, in uh, their role of uh, putative role of inflammation creators in aging organism. This idea uh, has become really popular, uh, especially following a series of brilliant works coming from a number of laboratories in which senescent cells were detected in vivo. Uh, in mice, in mouse models, and uh, when this mouse, uh, when these mice w uh, were treated with with agents which eradicated the senescent cells, numerous signs of rejuvenation were uh, observed. I'm talking about the, the first paper that kind appeared in uh, 2011. Mayo Clinic, uh, led by uh, Jim, in a group led by Jim Kirkland and Jan Van Dersen, uh, and um, a series of follow-up papers with um, similar results. In general, the uh, idea of putting senescent cells in the position of the key sources of uh, sterile chronic inflammation associated with aging uh, came uh, from uh, Judy Campisi who has uh, provided the most important discoveries uh, in that field. Well, this, this theory is extremely appealing in, for many reasons. First, it is very well supported by evidence. Indeed, senescent cells, when they turn uh, into senescence and culture, switch their phenotype into so-called so SASP, senescent associated secretory phenotype, the state in which cells continuously secrete pro-inflammatory factors. Second, these cells uh, appear in culture as a result of serial passaging resembling aging. Uh, it's known from Hyflex uh, times. And uh, therefore, uh, this link uh, became kind of natural between aging and senescent cells. The presumption was that certain cells in the body who 
used up the number of divisions they can go through uh, before they reach this state, uh, may be increasing with age, and uh, therefore these cells accumulate. Uh, each of them may become the source of uh, uh, sterile inflammation. Uh, each single one provides a very weak signal, but when they accumulate altogether, the impact may become significant and uh, translated into pathological conditions. So recently, there were very few, and it, not even now it's, it is like that, very few uh, biomarkers of senescent cells, none of which is uh, very reliable because every single biomarker is uh, kind of promiscuous and uh, uh, is not univer universally selective for senescent cells. Among these biomarkers, uh, two have been most popular. One is high level of expression of so-called senescent associated beta galactosidase, uh, which can be detected chemically in uh, fixed cells and tissues, which undergo s s staining, uh, including exgal, uh, which turn uh, beta galactosidase reaction into the blue uh, dye, under conditions which is not optimal for endogenous beta galactosidases of mammalian cells at low, P, low pH. And under these conditions, the background beta gal activity of normal cells is practically not seen, and senescent cells become brightly visible. So this um, reaction, uh, which unfortunately requires uh, cell, cannot be done on paraffin embedded uh, sections, and uh, require preservation of the enzymatic activity and therefore is available mostly on uh, the frozen sections or in cells and culture, um, has been used very, uh, very frequently. And uh, in, many, so in many papers, it has been just the only assay uh, which was used for detection of so-called senescent cells. The other biomarker, which res resulted from a detailed analysis of promoters which are active selectively in senescent cells, is uh, the gene uh, encoding cyclin-dependent kinase inhibitor P16. And the gene's name is INK4A. Uh, in fact, this promoter of this gene is uh, frequently upregulated in senescent cells, and it has relatively low background uh, in um, other cells of the organism. Again, uh, P16 activation is not limited to senescent cells, uh, and moreover, not every senescent cells has elevated P16, but that's the best we have as of today. That is why whenever the investigators want to create a mouse model in which they could have uh, the desirable gene expressed exclusively in senescent cells, they use P16 promoter. And there are several mouse m uh, models, I'm aware of three, uh, in which uh, reporter constructs were uh, put under P16 promoter. Uh, and the claim was that when this, these reporters become obviously expressed in mouse tissues, that was interpreted as accumulation of senescent cells. Uh, also, you can, one can put under this promoter the gene which enables selective eradication of cells with this expression, and therefore uh, there is an opportunity to selectively kill such cells again uh, this can be interpreted as a selective eradication of senescent cells. Using these models, uh, and, uh, two groups of investigators claim that eradication of senescent cells in aged mice led to a substantial demonstration of signs of rejuvenation, and in one uh, in one case with increased lifespan. Well, uh, obviously, uh, these uh, data uh, not only provided a very powerful support for the theory of the role of, of, about the role of senescent cells in aging, 
but also provided the proof of concept for development of pharmacological approaches to anti-aging treatment and treatment of conditions which lead to the high risk of development of age-related diseases, including cancer. We obtained such mice in our laboratory, uh, and we uh, uh, have been working with them during the last couple of years. The mice we are using are coming from the uh, laboratory of Norman Sharpless from uh, North Carolina, and uh, they have a luciferase reporter uh, gene, which is uh, substituting one of the alleles of P16, and uh, thereby uh, being expressed from the P16 promoter. Uh, we were pleased to see that these mice accumulate P16 uh, driven luciferase positive cells detected by in vivo imaging during their lives, which actually very well fit the uh, senescence cell theory and their accumulation during, during life. Uh, however, we were very um, surprised not seeing accumulation of these cells following total body radiation or treatment with other genotoxic conditions which supposedly should create lots of senescent cells. We also were puzzled uh, that we were unable to see activation of P16 driven luciferase when we take tissues from these mice and uh, isolated mesenchymal cells from these tissues uh, in vitro and then turn them into senescence and uh, we failed to see activation of luciferase. Again, uh, all this together stimulated us to look at the nature of P16 positive cells in these mice and uh, determine their, their nature, their origin and their fate in uh, in vivo. We started from uh, following the consequences of injection of cells which would turn into senescence in vitro, following injection in vivo into mice. And uh, uh, we labeled cells, uh, we made cell senescence in culture by gamma radiation. Then we injected them intraperitoneally or subcutaneously into mice. And we looked for their presence by monitoring the label, the label which they were uh, marked with. Well, it appears that this labeled cells, their traces are disappearing quite quickly, and within a few days there are none left in, uh, in the mice. However, if you put normal cells of similar origin, uh, they actually last much longer. That was the first indication that there may be a mechanism of selective eradication of senescent cells in the body. To check this mechanism, and one of our hypotheses was that this mechanism is associated with physical attack of uh, some cells of immunity against senescent cells, and this is supposed to be innate immunity because it's happening immediately, without any education of the organism. Uh, we used a trick in which we embedded senescent cells created in vitro into alginate beads, small spheres uh, con consisting of uh, polymer, which enables to keep cells alive inside them, does not interfere with acquisition of nutrients and oxygen by the cells, but prevents any uh, attack of these cells uh, against these cells from uh, any immunocytes. When we took these beads filled with senescent cells and put them in peritoneal cavity of mice, we were pleased to see that they are lasting for weeks without a significant death, indicating that uh, senescent cells who disappear if they are injected without protective beads are indeed killed by some so far unknown mechanism. In order to identify the executors of senescent cells, we put these beads filled with senescent cells as bait uh, inside peritoneal cavity of normal mice and two weeks later we pulled them out 
and analyzed who was accumulating in terms of host cells around these beads in lavage liquid as well as in the capsule uh, which was formed around every bead. Our results brought us to a <clears throat> very important and quite striking observation. A major part of the cells which we saw in these beads as well as in the lavage appeared to be cells with macrophageal markers on them, uh, which appeared to be bright fluorescence, meaning that they have activated P16, and also positive for uh, beta-gal staining, conducted under conditions we are using to reveal senescent cells. So we had to conclude that senescent cells put in the beads attract by probably by the products of their secretion special subtypes of immune cells significant proportion of which become reprogrammed to start expressing two biomarkers which people have been using to distinguish senescent cells. We started this macrophages in detail and uh, uh, after we published our first paper in which we described this phenomenon we published the second one also in aging uh, where their properties were uh, described in further details. And uh, we are confident that these are bona fide macrophages, <clears throat> not only because they have, a, they have biomarkers, they have a, um, surface antigens specific for macrophages, but also they're capable of phagocytosis. And uh, uh, moreover, they can be selectively killed by liposome embedded clodronate, the uh, poison uh, which only kills cells capable of phagocytosis. This killing could be done both in vitro and in vivo when you inject, inject liposomal clodronate inside mice. So uh, as far as the presence of these cells in the body uh, of those mice which are not uh, embedded with alginate beads with senescent cells. Today we are confident that uh, these macrophages are accumulating in subcutaneous uh, fat of aged mice in uh, large numbers. And again, they express uh, biomarkers of macrophages that can be selectively eradicated by clodronate. So, uh, altogether it means that the cells which become P16 positive in vivo not necessarily are senescent cells. Our observations does not disprove that the signal which we and other investigators are seeing in these mice and increasing with age is uh, not associated with senescent cells. So it's uh, uh, we potentially certain proportion of cells we see are indeed senescent. However, we are confident that significant part of this signal goes from macrophages, which are can be induced into the phenotype associated with expression of both senescent markers when they are exposed to senescent cells. What is also interesting that this phenotype is reversible uh, and in our uh, second paper, we provide a number of physiological stimuli which can either stimulate or suppress the acquisition of this phenotype by macrophages. All this together uh, provides a very interesting step forward in uh, evolution of the theory of uh, aging associated with accumulation of certain specific cell types contributing to the sterile inflammation occurring in tissues. Today, uh, we can say that those cells which we claim to be the main source of that are not necessarily senescent, but also can be immunocytes who share with senescent cells some of their properties, but are not senescent by nature and simply reprogrammed macrophages. What is the relative impact of these macrophages versus uh, senescent cells towards the process of aging is uh, a very important question, not only from theoretical standpoint, 
but also from practical standpoint, because as from the time when senescent cells were claimed to be the key players of aging, uh, there have been a substantial effort in the field in generating and testing senolytic compounds, drugs, emerging drugs, which potentially can have anti-aging effect due to eradication of senescent cells from the body. Whether senolytic compounds would indeed solve the issue, because presumably they will eliminate only a part of the P16 positive cells, uh, to what extent we need to uh, redirect our attention to the senescent cell associated macrophages uh, as a potential alternative source of uh, secreted factors is an open question. And these are the questions which we are trying to address in our ongoing work, which stems from these observations. Thank you.